We're starting the quarter off with chapter 20, which is on aldehydes and ketones. We're going to study the reactions that form aldehydes and ketones and also the reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Before we get into those reactions, though, we're going to look at how to name aldehydes and ketones and some of the basic properties of aldehydes and ketones. So just as a refresher, the difference between aldehydes and ketones, because they are structurally very similar functional groups. An aldehyde is a carbonyl group that has at least one hydrogen attached. At least one on the carbonyl group. Aldehyde, it could have two hydrogens. Doesn't, it doesn't have to have an R group attached. So that is an example of an aldehyde. Ketone just has two R groups on the carbonyl group. So they're pretty similar. Aldehydes and ketones are pretty commonly used as fragrances and also as flavorings. You've encountered quite a few aldehydes and ketones in the lab already. Um, so acetone, of course we don't use that as a fragrance or a flavoring, but you know that acetone has has a very strong smell and somebody might describe it as a as a as a good smell but we know it to be a great solvent you have maybe in the lab worked with benzaldehyde that is one of the chemicals that we use a lot of times for unknown so perhaps it was one of the unknowns that you had last quarter benzaldehyde is used in almond flavoring. It is the chemical that's naturally present um, in giving stuff the, the nice yummy almond scent to it. Um, cinnamaldehyde, you may have had that as an unknown. And you can probably guess that cinnamaldehyde has a cinnamon flavor. Um, you may have had carvone as an unknown. Sometimes we use carvone as an unknown. It has a minty flavor. And also all of these things, benzaldehyde, um, not just an almond flavor, but also an almond smell. We're going to get into naming aldehydes and ketones. Before we get into naming aldehydes and ketones, I want to um, write down prioritization of functional groups for naming, because now that you know quite a bit of IUPAC naming, we're gonna come across more and more examples of molecules that have multiple functional groups in them. And remember, if you have a molecule that has two or more functional groups in it, you have to decide which functional group is high priority and name the molecule according to its high priority functional group. So based on just on the functional groups that we currently know how to name, the highest priority functional group is the aldehyde. I guess you don't know how to name that yet, but you're about to. And the second highest priority is the ketone. And again, this is not, aldehyde is not the highest priority functional group. It's just the highest priority one that you've learned about so far. And then after that is alcohol. And then we have the alkenes. And under that, the alkynes. And then at the bottom of the list, we have our alkanes, 
which is going to include alkyl halides. And also it's going to include ethers, because if you recall from last quarter, ethers aren't their own functional group. Um, so they are just named as substituents hanging off of some other type of molecule.